Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. Good to be with you for Psalms 90 and 91. Two great psalms, um, a lot to cover. We will need the Lord's help because both of these psalms are full of rich content and are very important for us and have much truth to communicate to us. So let's pray and ask the Lord's help and then dig in together. Heavenly Father, you have been with us every step of the way through this journey through God's word, and you've blessed us again and again with your word, which is never failing to bring us the fullness of your truth and blessing. And we pray today that you would speak to us through Psalms 90 and 91, that you would write them on our hearts, that you would help us to hear them, to receive them, to believe them, to understand them, and to live for you in response to them. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Psalm 90 is a prayer of Moses, the man of God. That makes it maybe the oldest or one of the oldest psalms, uh, as Moses lived hundreds of years before David. And so this is one of the uh, oldest of the psalms. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return man to dust and say, Return, O children of man, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger. By your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are seventy, or even by reason of strength eighty. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger? and your wrath according to the fear of you. So teach us to number our days, that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Hmm. Well, this is a very powerful and encouraging psalm, but it's also a sobering psalm and a wake-up call. We live in a world that likes to avoid death and the reality of our mortality, that likes to pretend as if we can just forever go on being eternally young and youthful and healthy and live forever, and there's billions of dollars spent every year trying to make people look younger, feel younger, stave off disease, stave off aging and the effects of growing older and try to avoid death and then to sort of cover up the reality of death in different ways. And Psalm 90 really has a very sobering message for us in that at the heart of this psalm, it's telling us that our lives are short and that we are guilty before a holy God. And so our short years of our life, we spend deserving God's wrath. Now, that's a message that's not going to win you a lot of followers on social media or influence within our culture. Your life is very short, 70 or 80 years. You are temporary. You pass away like the grass that withers in the heat of the sun. And you are guilty of offending God. And so you are under his wrath. And his wrath is actually why your life is so short. That's, that's at the heart of the message of Psalm 90. Wow. Ugh. I thought you said this was encouraging. Well, it is encouraging because 
despite the fact that our lives are short and we deserve God's wrath and we are under God's wrath, despite that fact, the Lord has been the dwelling place of his people from generation to generation. And he can and will satisfy us with his steadfast love every day of our lives. He can make our lives meaningful and purposeful. He can give us work that matters and he can show his favor to us and to our children. Because while we are temporary, God is eternal. While we are sinful, God is sinless. While we deserve the wrath of God, God treats us according to his steadfast love. That really is what Psalm 90 is telling us. God's been our dwelling place throughout all generations. He was here before the mountains were brought forth. He has always been God from everlasting to everlasting. He is the one who sovereignly returns man to dust. It's not just that our lives are short, but God numbers our days and he brings them to an end, sometimes very quickly, sometimes very unexpectedly. And it is because we are sinful and we do live under the wrath of God. However, if we are wise, this final stanza of Psalm 90 verses 12 to 17 really tells us, if we are wise, this is how we will respond. We will, we will want to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. We want to deal honestly with the fact that we are not immortal. We will die and we have a few days in which to glorify God. But God will have pity. If we ask for pity, for mercy, for steadfast love, he will give it to us. He will satisfy us in the morning with his steadfast love that we may rejoice and be glad all of our days. He can make us glad. He can give us meaningful work to do and he can give a godly inheritance to our children. And so in the midst of a short and difficult life, God is our everlasting joy and our salvation and our purpose. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Psalm 91 is a much more powerful, much more, I'm sorry, much more positive and encouraging psalm overall than Psalm 90, but it is one that can be easily misunderstood. So, while Psalm 90 was very sobering in its realism and deeply hopeful in calling us to uh, find our shelter in God and our satisfaction in his steadfast love and joy because our lives are short and sinful and under his wrath, there's just realism and a hope that's strong in the face of that realism. Psalm 91 soars to the heights of, of the great promises of God's protection of us and can be misunderstood. In fact, Psalm 91 is the only scripture we have in the Bible that we know that was directly quoted by Satan. 
in tempting Jesus. When Satan was tempting Jesus by having him go to the pinnacle of the temple and asking him to throw himself down, Satan quoted Psalm 91, verse 11 and 12. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. We should not take the promises of God and use them to test God, to cast shade or doubt upon God, or take them out of their context. Jesus, of course, was one who dwelt in the shelter of the Most High, who who was one who fully trusted in God his Father and sought refuge in the fortress of God his Father. And yet he was crucified by the hands of wicked men. He was put to death in open shame. So it cannot be the case that Psalm 91 is promising us that if only we will trust God, we will not be harmed by anything that people can do to us. There was a very disturbing uh, account of <clears throat> some a, a group of professing Christians who were being misled by a terrible gang leader in South Africa, or a church leader, sorry, a terrible church leader in South Africa. They went walking through a heavily gang controlled area of town in a, an open protest of the gang's power and violent oppression of the people in that area. And the pastor told the people in his congregation that if they would just trust God, they would be bulletproof. And as members of his congregation were being shot and killed or wounded by members of this violent gang, he said that the reason why the bullets hurt them is because they didn't have enough faith. That if they really trusted God, that they didn't need to be afraid and that they would be bulletproof. Now that is just a flat out lie. It's a manipulation of scripture. It's taking scripture out of context. But Psalm 91 provides some of the, the material, the source material for false pastors like that to lead their people astray. Because it says, he's gonna cover you with his pinions. He's gonna give you refuge under his wings. He's gonna be your shield. You don't need to fear the terror of the night or the error that flies by day. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand. It will not come near you. So what does it mean then? If it doesn't mean that you're bulletproof, if you trust in God, what does it mean? What it means is that God who made you and God who has redeemed you is the God who can keep you and keep your soul and guard your life from the attacks of the enemy. You see, there's a greater harm that could come to God's people than a bullet hitting us or a disease striking us. There is the attack of the enemy of our souls who would cause us to doubt God and to question Christ and to run away from the sheltering wings of the Almighty and to not have our dwelling place and our refuge in him and instead to doubt and to disown and to disobey and to deny Christ. And God is saying here that if we will trust in him, he can guard our souls. He can guard our lives. And we know that because of the resurrection of Jesus, that <clears throat> believers who die in the Lord do not actually die, but they are immediately ushered into the presence of God and they await <laughs> resurrection bodies when Christ returns. And so the evil that Satan intends, which is to destroy us forever, will not come against us. God delivers us and protects us and gives us what we need eternally for our true and eternal good. And that's not an excuse or a cop-out. It's the truth. And we need to view life from eternal perspective. Psalm 90 and 91, both together, I think, are calling us to look at life from an eternal perspective. This life in this body, in this world, is short and full of evil and suffering. But God satisfies us with his steadfast love. God keeps us and guards us under the shelter of his wings. God is our refuge and our fortress, and he will keep us to eternity. 
He will <coughs> satisfy us. He will rescue us. He will answer us. He will ultimately show us his salvation. The last word of Psalm 91 is salvation, which is Yeshua, the name of Jesus in Hebrew. It's the same Hebrew word at root as the word of the name of Jesus. And so the eternal perspective is, while this life is short and this life is full of trouble, while we are under attack from the enemy of our souls who wants to destroy us, while we are guilty of sin and we've come under the wrath and curse of God because of sin, Jesus saves us from the wrath and curse of God and gives us the steadfast love of God. And Jesus shields us from the attacks of the enemy against us and rescues us into eternal life. We can trust in Christ to be our dwelling place, to be our fortress, to be our deliverer, to be the steadfast love of the Lord to us, to be the joy of our souls for eternity, to be our salvation. With an eternal, Christ-centered perspective, we are shepherded through life by the God who made us, who saves us, who keeps us all the way into eternity. Let's pray. Father, we do face much trouble in this life. We face doubts and fears. We face sin and sorrow and suffering. We face attack from the enemy. We face uh, the, 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 the restlessness of our own sinful soul. We face the allure of the world and its false promises and its false crises that it would suck us into. We are in great danger and we are only here for a short period of time in the light of eternity. We need Jesus. We need Jesus to be our joy and our satisfaction. We need Jesus to be our dwelling place. We need Jesus to be our protector and our deliverer our salvation. Guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, we pray in his name and for his glory. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me for Psalms 90 and 91. I hope you have a blessed day in the Lord.